The Wisdom of Paul Brunton Spiritual Transformation 1 What Blocks You from Self-Realization? Quest Video Series 1, Video Number 5, presented by the Paul Brunton Philosophic Foundation. The central point of this quest is the inner opening of the ego's heart to your soul, the over-self. You have not to become divine, for you are divine. You have, however, to think and do what is divine. What is the ego but the overself surrounded with barriers conditioned by its instruments, the body, the feelings, and the intellect, forgetful of its own nature? We must start by believing that concealed somewhere within our mind, there is the intuition of truth and create from within ourselves and by our own efforts, the strength, the wisdom, and the inspiration we need. The rays of light would enter your conscious mind even now, were they not prevented by the extroversion of your attention, the upheavals of emotion and passion, the narrow rigidities of the logical intellect, and the attachments of your ego. If the grace of the overself is to take hold of you, no part of your ego ought to offer resistance. This is why a preparation for the event is needed, a process of taking out those things which are certain to instigate such resistance. This is why the removal of these obstructions, which is the long path's special work, is indispensable to your progress. In other words, the activity of the long path is necessary to the successful treading of the short path. A student has a discussion with Anthony Damiani, a prominent teacher of Paul Brunton's ideas. I told Anthony that sometimes I feel empty inside or like a phony. And he said that the negatives are basically an expression of the ego. And by sending up a smokescreen of negative emotions, it keeps you preoccupied with itself. And then, there's a deeper anxiety. There is, in the core of our being, a basic anxiety, a little empty hole from which all other forms of anxiety and unease draw their strength. No one may free themselves from every form of outward suffering, but all may free themselves from inward suffering. Those people whose resort is solely the personal ego are constantly subject to its limitations and narrowness, and consequently are afflicted with strains and anxieties. Spiritual questers who let it go and open themselves up, whose resort is to their higher self, find it infinite and boundless, and consequently are filled with inward peace. The experiences which come to us and the circumstances in which we find ourselves are not meaningless. They usually have a personal karmic lesson for us and should be studied much more than books. We must try to understand impersonally the inner significance behind these events. Their meaning can be ascertained by trying to see them impartially, by evaluating the forces which are involved in them, by profound reflection, and by prayer. The way in which we react to the varied pleasant and unpleasant situations which develop in everyday life will be a better index to the understanding we have gained than any mystical visions painted by the imagination. A student has a question for Anthony Damiani. I asked Anthony, when we sit down to meditate, should we look for the ego? He said, no. When you sit down to meditate, you are doing something else. You are trying to develop that necessary introversion by which and through which 
you can become aware of the ego. The ego sees its own picture of the world, colored by its own characteristics and contained within its own limitations. Because of that, it seldom sees people as they really are. We are not always aware of our motives and sometimes deceive ourselves about them. This is either because some of them lie in the dimmer parts of our being or because they are hidden by the illusion-making power of the ego itself. If the ego is to be accepted because it cannot be destroyed, it is still to be mastered and its hold destroyed. Thus, in the onward march, aspirants have to overcome their sensations and emotions, their thoughts and reasonings, all indeed that they have hitherto known as themselves, before they can wake up to the existence of the hidden observer. If we could withdraw sufficiently from our ego to stop letting its interests and desires overpower us, we could thereby let peace come to triumph in our hearts. The more we try to fight the ego, the more we think about it and concentrate on it. This keeps us still its prisoner. Better is it to turn our back on it and think about, concentrate on, the higher self, because there is something of God in us, as the over-self. God-like qualities and capacities are in us. I am essentially wise, powerful, loving. But to the extent that we identify ourselves with the little ego, we obscure these grand qualities. We have the power to work creatively on our environment as well as on the body in which we are housed, just as the world mind, the creative spirit, works on the universe. Keep away from psychic practices and occult explorations. They are filled with dangers and pitfalls. First, devote your energies to the foundational work of learning philosophy, improving character, disciplining emotion, and cultivating calmness. Only after this work has been well advanced will it ever be safe for you to take up occultism, for only then will you be properly equipped to do so. This identification with self in us is the ideal set for everyone to be realized through long experience and much suffering or through accepting instruction, following revelation, unfolding intuition, practicing meditation, and living wisely. And this best self is the deepest part of our being underneath the thoughts which buzz like bees and the emotions which express our egotism. A sublime stillness reigns in it. There, in that stillness, is our truest identity. Nature cannot be hastened. The bloom of a flower opens in its proper time. If the short path yields immediate or quick results to some aspirants, it is only because they are persons of superior development. They have served their apprenticeship on the long path already, either in this life or previous lives. Each human being has a specific work to do, to express the uniqueness that is oneself. It can be delegated to no one else. In doing it, if we use the opportunity aright, we may be led to the great uniqueness which is superpersonal, beyond our ego and all egos. That wonderful time when you can look straight into yourself, through ego to over-self, awaits your endeavors. Paul Brunton, 1898 to 1981, a best-selling British author of a dozen books, spent much of his early life researching the original sacred teachings of Western and Eastern spiritual traditions. He traveled the world to discover and communicate with Christian, Kabbalistic, Vedantic, Buddhist, 
Taoist, indigenous, and Sufi masters. Blending the richness of his own spiritual experience and inquiry with these ancient and contemporary teachings, he developed a philosophy and path of practice that suits life in the 21st century, one that expresses the greatest wisdom and love available to humankind. Regardless of how it is named, we each have a divine soul, an over-self or higher self, that is with us here and now, waiting to be realized. Paul Brunton's writings are a source of deep spiritual guidance for all those interested in living a divinely inspired life. Anthony Damiani, 1922-1984, was a prominent teacher of Paul Brunton's ideas and founder of the Wisdom's Goldenrod Center for Philosophic Studies. Inspired to penetrate into and understand the depths of traditional wisdom, he taught classes on the major philosophies as well as the teachings of Paul Brunton. His dedicated students compiled the 16 volumes of Paul Brunton's posthumous writings titled The Notebooks of Paul Brunton, available from www.larsonpublications.com. Quotes were taken from these books. When completed, the Paul Brunton Quest Series 1 and 2 will contain the following topics. Please subscribe to the Paul Brunton Philosophic Foundation channel.